Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Reagan. This program is made possible by grants from Metropolitan Life Foundation and Richard King Mellon Foundation. Additional funding is provided by the JM Foundation. Welcome to the White House and welcome to a very special and important evening. We've gathered here tonight because of a frightening problem that concerns you and your family. Did you know, for example, that a vast number of school-aged children may be using drugs and alcohol for two or three years before their parents are aware of it? That's very alarming. But there's a new and hopeful answer. We're introducing it tonight. It's called the chemical people. <laughs> Tonight, from the East Room of the White House, The Chemical People, hosts First Lady Nancy Reagan and Michael Landon present an appeal to all Americans to join the fight against the problem of drug and alcohol abuse among our nation's youth. There have been many historic occasions in this special house. Tonight marks another. On this occasion, we are launching a landmark effort to fight back against school-age drug and alcohol abuse in your community. Public television is joining communities across the nation to start finding answers. And tonight, I appeal to all Americans to join in. That means attending town meetings in your community on two upcoming Wednesday evenings, November 2nd and the 9th. Now, your town meetings should then evolve into ongoing task forces. The local community task force has proved to be a most effective instrument in creating results. Now, that concept began in Pittsburgh and was designed by a coalition of community organizations and Pittsburgh's public television station, WQED. Their effort and the National Chemical People Project is guided by WQED's president, Lloyd Kaiser. Kai, would you explain how it works? What's the real secret of its success? Well, Michael, it's surprisingly simple. The f but first, the hard part. You have to admit that the problem exists, that it exists in your community, and then to care enough to organize the community to deal with it. For most people, this is the most devastating, the most cruel crisis that they've ever faced. It's the unthinkable. Drug and alcohol abuse by one, one's own son or daughter. The process is so frightening so foreign to past experience that it becomes paralyzing to a parent and can't really be faced alone. And so in Pittsburgh, we created community task forces in which parents, educators, drug and alcohol professionals, juvenile officers, in fact, the entire community could work together to find answers. No more struggling alone, no more finger pointing, no more denying that the problem exists. We've tested the concept in 120 communities in Western Pennsylvania, and it works. Well, Kai, I've heard about the success of the Pittsburgh plan, but tell us exactly what community task forces do. Well, they confront the amazing ignorance about the problem by first informing themselves and then informing the community. And they seek out professionals to work with parents and with the schools to help them to detect when a young person has started to have a drug problem. But their major work is in the crucial area of prevention. Prevention in the community and in the early grades. Now, none of this is a quick fix. But believe me, Michael, when a community task force is there and resolves to take action, it can make an amazing difference. As public television carries this vision nationally. Viewers need to know that watching is not enough. They need to become involved. Can I tell them why? Well, the problems of the 80s are huge. And the effort of one person seems so small. We withdraw. We concede. Don't. If you are a parent, if you are a grandparent, a son or daughter, an educator, a member of one of our 35 national supporting organizations, or if you are just one caring individual, you are needed at a town meeting on November 2nd and 9th. The first program is an eye-opener, and the second will help you learn what a community can do. And you'll meet some pretty wonderful people. I've seen it happen. 
Together, you can change panic into hope. And I have to believe that you are the kind of person that will want to help. Well, you have a choice. Or if you're a caring person, maybe you don't. Two television programs. The first documents that ours is the Chemical Society. The second provides community answers. Let's preview a minute of each. The first program, The Chemical Society, details the terrifying scope of teenage drug abuse. Bill Bixby reports the hard facts. And young people whose lives became chemical nightmares relate their experiences. I was drinking a whole lot. And there are months that I can't remember. Rita Moreno explains how denial clouds the problem, and parents who've had to face the frightening truth about their children's chemical dependency tell their stories. I was hurt. I was resentful. I was angry. I was terrified. Bruce Weitz confronts a pusher with the truth. Hey, give me a break, Marcus Weldon. Now you give them a break, Bill. You gotta let these people in on how the abuse of these stimulants can result in hallucinations and convulsions, and maybe even death. The second hour of The Chemical People provides a clear course of action, community answers. Willie Stargell explains the task force concept, neighbors joining neighbors for unified action. It's a method to combat chemical abuse proven throughout the country. And this message is getting out. And I'm convinced, you know, if I didn't have that kind of uh, feeling and fervor for it, I wouldn't be sitting on that task force. Sandy Duncan explains that chemical dependency is no longer a condition of despair. There is hope for young people through caring, effective treatment. When I was saying that I was addicted was when I got pregnant. And here I was trying to quit dope because of the baby's sake, and I couldn't. Michael Landon provides the starting point of community action for a long-term solution, prevention. Deal with the problem of drug abuse before it gets started. They want you to feel good about yourself so that you don't need drugs and alcohol to make you feel good. The two programs of The Chemical People, hosted by First Lady Nancy Reagan, examine the problem of chemical abuse and provide a solution. Chemical abuse is a huge problem that can confuse us. But there are ways to find solutions if we break the problem down to a manageable size and work together. Don't leave your meeting tonight before you agree to meet next week and get organized. You can see these public television programs in your home on November 2nd and 9th. But don't. Watch them in your local town meeting. At home, you'll miss the follow-up discussion on drug abuse and alcohol abuse in your community and what you and your neighbors can do about it. View the programs with them and hear the local story. That has to be your priority. In addition, most local public television stations are producing local television programs which will document the problem where you live. Don't miss them. And now, after months of preparation, the moment has come. Is anything happening across America? Well, we have four regional reports that'll answer that. Our first report is from the Northeast and John Dimsdale. The concept of town meetings was created more than 300 years ago in New England. Now, once again, citizens are getting involved as town meetings become the cornerstone of the chemical people. Led by public television stations and supported by 35 national organizations, they are receiving an incredible response in the Northeast. The town meeting task force concept does appear to once again have found its time. In fact, eight governors in the Northeast region are personally leading their state's efforts. But the real test of success is the number of town meetings. Let's look at that state by state. First, Maine. Maine will have an unbelievable 230 town meetings. That is a huge accomplishment by any standard. In Lewiston, there will be 13 additional television programs dealing with the local drug and alcohol problem there. In Orono, the 4-H clubs have pledged to join with others to evolve every town meeting into an ongoing task force, which is the real goal of this project. New Hampshire, with a projected 100 town meetings, has had the same success. And in Vermont, with 52 town meetings, they're ready for the chemical people. The legislature here has passed a law requiring all schools to have a drug education program for grades kindergarten through 12. Among students who participate in such prevention programs, almost 50% fewer start using alcohol and marijuana. 
Massachusetts will have 443 town meetings. The governor has taped a promotional spot for them, and as in other states, the commercial media are providing a great deal of promotional support. Rhode Island projects 25. The Family Counseling Alcoholism Unit of the Rhode Island Family Court has been especially active here. As expected, New York State has a very large number, 832. The effort here is statewide a citywide student poster contest in Schenectady, special meetings for the deaf in Rochester, and unique cooperation among the New York City public television stations and southern Connecticut and northern New Jersey. Town meetings are working with the youth officers of the police department in most New York City precincts. Connecticut, working with the Junior League and others, will have 30, and New Jersey, working with the National Federation of Parents for Drug-Free Youth and other groups, will have 110. In Pennsylvania, where it all started, the number is 470, led by the governor, the speaker of the house, and their wives. There will be Halloween floats, messages on grocery bags, milk cartons, and promos by local sports figures. The project takes on an international dimension, too, since Erie will also serve four Canadian communities in southern Ontario. Delaware will be scheduling six. Maryland, with 80 town meetings, is using soccer and Baltimore Oriole stars to appear in a number of promotional spots there. 80 town meetings are planned in the District of Columbia and part of nearby Maryland and Virginia. The two public television stations in the district have jointly developed an excellent, almost block-by-block -block organization. In the nation's capital, the congressional wives have also agreed to support the project nationally. 102 is the number in West Virginia. Much of the success in the Northeast is due to the powerful project alliance between public television and the 35 ever-present national organizations and their many local chapters. As a result, the entire Northeast is mobilized. Every state is involved. The grand total of our town meetings is 2,560. Michael, by any standard, that is impressive. Thank you, John. That is indeed awesome. But let's all remember, so is the problem. American young people have the highest level of illicit drug use to be found in any nation in the industrialized world. In a recent year, the Drug Enforcement Administration estimated that illegal drugs generated approximately $79 billion in retail sales. So you see why we need to get organized. Mary Rawson, how about a report on the southern region? Once again, it's the solid south, Michael. Every state has enlisted. I would call their strong response militant. In fact, two states, Texas and Kentucky, call it a war. Let's start with Florida, which has a total of 303 town meetings. The timing of the chemical people is particularly right for Miami. It will cap a month-long campaign presented by public television, the Miami Herald, the Junior League, and the governor's office. Jack Nicholas has cut public television promotional spots to help the campaign. Tampa has created informed teens made up of teenagers who will help. Jacksonville, like many cities, will offer on-air and off-air consultation for those who need help. The goal in Georgia is 200 town meetings guided by a 12-member steering committee formed by the governor's office. 122 town meetings have been organized in South Carolina by the Drug and Alcohol Bureau. North Carolina will have 153. A very supportive school system has centered these meetings in both rural and urban areas. Virginia plans 116 town meetings, and as is happening in a great many states, November 2nd to November 9th has been proclaimed Chemical People Week. 180 task forces have been planned for Kentucky, with the state government and Kentucky War on Drugs playing a major role. Kentucky Public Television has commissioned a play directed to young people and their parents. Tennessee has organized 212 town meetings. 30 town meetings are planned in Alabama. Incidentally, of these, four will be entirely run by teenagers. Mississippi projects 100. They have embarked on a massive distribution plan to get the word out. Arkansas, with 80, is led by the wife of a U.S. representative, supported by much effort involving the 4-H clubs and friends of public television. Louisiana projects 75, led by the wife of the governor. Three other southern governors are leading their states in this cause. In Louisiana, 5,000 school-aged children are attending a rally on drug and alcohol abuse. You expect big numbers in Texas, and their number for this project is 875. 
the Texans War on Drugs, and all 10 public television stations are involved. As in many other states, the commercial broadcasters are proving to be a great help in Texas. Lubbock Public Television commissioned a local survey of their young people. Houston has been given 100 billboards to promote their effort. And Dallas has actually organized all of their school districts into town meetings, a mammoth task. Special plans have been made to serve the Hispanic communities, large in Texas and in many other states. On November 2nd and 9th, the Spanish language version will be simulcast on radio. Our final state is Oklahoma and a remarkable 500 that took a lot of organization. Our total then in Region 2, primarily the South, is 2,946 community town meetings. In summary, I would say, Michael, that the effort here is serious, determined and amazingly successful. Thank you, Mary. I would add it needs to be. Two-thirds of all American young people use an illicit drug at least once while in high school. At least one in every 16 high school seniors will drink alcohol daily. The same number smoke marijuana daily. More than one-third have used drugs other than marijuana. Our task forces can change those statistics. Well, let's see how they're trying in the heartland. For the Midwest region, here's Chris Moore. The chemical people continues to gain momentum in the Midwest. A number of governors have made a strong commitment to utilize the chemical people as a vehicle to help eradicate drug and alcohol abuse in their states. In Minnesota, for example, where 300 communities are establishing town meetings, the outgoing governor of one party initiated the effort, and the incoming governor of the opposite party now leads the cause. As elsewhere, the effort here is nonpartisan. Search. A national research organization conducted a statewide survey which validated the extensive use of drugs and alcohol by school-age people in Minnesota. North Dakota will assemble 22 town meetings. In South Dakota, where the governor has been active, 75 meetings will take place. Nebraska has a goal of 100. The nine-channel state network, which will provide a live phone-in program to stimulate local discussion, is working closely with the State Department of Education. Kansas has a total of 140 town meetings, which are organized in both the largest and smallest communities throughout the state. Missouri has the surprising total of 481 meetings. They involve practically everybody. A Baptist congregation in Roytown, near Kansas City, for example, has chartered a bus to take the whole congregation to a special town meeting. 10,000 Boy Scouts and 15,000 Girl Scouts will attend watch parties and join adults to form groups throughout the state. A special merit badge is being designed. Ohio projects 540, led by the governor and his wife, who are appearing in spots promoting the state's efforts. In Indiana, the number is 106. An important element will be a six-month follow-up program to measure the outcome and progress of local task forces. In Illinois, the number of town meetings is projected at 323. The state drug agency and the PTA are collaborating with many other groups. The Rotary, Lions, Kiwanis, and other fraternal organizations are playing a major role here as they are in most states. In Chicago, both public and private schools are involved. Iowa has a goal of 100 town meetings statewide. Michigan's total is 291. In East Lansing, a three-part series on alcoholism will be directed to the campus population as well as the total community. In Gross Point, former First Lady Betty Ford will appear in order to add outreach impact. And in Detroit, the Detroit for Blacks organization has given its support to the Chemical People Project, as has the Urban League nationally. The black and Hispanic communities each have a special kind of problem, and their own meetings will reflect that. The Chemical People Project is designed to be flexible. Each community determines the nature of its problem and decides what it's going to do. Wisconsin, where 201 town meetings are planned, is our last state in Region 3. The region total is 2,679. The Midwest is really ready, Michael, and we haven't seen anything quite like this. Thank you, Chris. That's most impressive. You know, abuse exists in every community, but there are dramatic regional differences. For example, there are three times as many high school seniors using cocaine in the West as they do in the South. Our final town meeting report is from the Western region and Patty Burns. Now, that's my country, so I hope this number is as phenomenal as the others have been, Patty. It certainly is, Michael. Throughout the West, there is an assurance that the chemical people concept will work. 
New Mexico will have 36 town meetings. The New Mexico Federation of Women's Groups adopted the project and is working with many others. In fact, the state legislature and special assembly has viewed both programs. This is significant because task forces are interested in wise laws. Nine states have recently raised the drinking age, and when they did, fatal nighttime auto accidents decreased by 26%. Arizona will have a total of 270 town meetings. The statewide PTA and the medical auxiliary are spearheading the project. In recognition of the unique needs and resources of American Indians on reservations, a volunteer from Arizona State University is taking the chemical people to those citizens. They will have 10 town meetings on their own. Michael, California, with 1,162, has the most town meetings of any state. San Diego has a blue ribbon committee with support of the mayor, the city council, board of education, junior league, parents who care, and many others. All citizens have even received chemical people information with their water bills. Fresno is using promotional messages featuring former drug abusers. The Greater Los Angeles involvement includes a computer referral service run by a volunteer staff. To the north, Oregon has a statewide total of 80. Some actually drove 150 miles to attend some of the satellite project training sessions. The state of Washington has 193 town meetings planned. And of special note, the small town of Packwood, where a concerned pharmacist is securing tapes of the programs. You see, Packwood is located on the side of Mount Rainier where television reception is non-existent. Idaho has 25 meetings scheduled, and Montana, even without a PBS station, has arranged two town meetings. Nevada will have 20 town meetings. In Las Vegas, a city of billboards, a local billboard advertiser has donated eight to the chemical people. They're going to be located right next to those touting casinos and showgirls. Utah will have 97 town meetings. The projection for Colorado, 245. Fans attending Bronco football games in Denver will see chemical people messages being flashed on their gigantic scoreboard. Wyoming, with a brand new PBS station, has assembled 13 town meetings. And amazingly, there will be 127 town meetings in Alaska. Former pro football star Rosie Greer has keynoted enthusiasm here. And incidentally, one of the communities is just 35 miles from Siberia. In Hawaii, 30 town meetings are projected, and on the South Pacific island of Guam, village meetings are being organized in their 10 school districts, and they are planning six local television programs to follow up the national effort. In the West, the challenge to establish town meetings has been clearly accepted. In fact, six governors in the Western region have pledged their support. The total is 2,306 town meetings. Well, Michael, I hope you are now ready for the national total. I can report that in the entire United States, the chemical people has generated a projected 10,491. They are in every state plus the territory of Guam and in the coverage area of all but three of the 263 public television stations. Now that has to be impressive. Thank you very much, Patty. And actually, the numbers continue to increase. Uh, just in are additional town meetings, which raise our total to 10,675. This landmark achievement demonstrates how together communities and their public television stations can make an enormous difference. Now, I believe in this effort, or I wouldn't be appearing in all three of these programs. I learned the hard way what drugs can do to a child and to a family. And I will not accept non-participation as my role in this effort, and nor should you. Be at those town meetings on November the 2nd and November the 9th. This is your country. These are your families. Love them. Now I'm very pleased to introduce the dedicated leader of this parade, the host of our two programs, a very, very caring First Lady, Mrs. Ray. This is a very encouraging evening for me. I've been visiting and observing and trying to help with this terrible problem for several years, years now. I've seen the heartache, the lost lives, the saved lives, and the very desperate search for hope. 
And that's what the chemical people brings, hope. It's the largest bundle of hope I've seen. Across the nation, we now have a fantastic opportunity, one for which we've all prayed. And as we heard, it's happening in over 10,000 neighborhoods. I'm so happy with the reports we received tonight from around the country. I believe that television and the community working together can revolutionize attitudes toward drugs. I long for the day when our schools and homes will be drug free. I'm very grateful to the 260 public television stations across the country, the 35 national organizations, and the 50,000 dedicated volunteers who are making chemical people a reality. You're preparing for the day that we desire so desperately. Tonight, I'd like to ask for the support of all the media and all drug and alcohol professionals. I appeal to the citizens of each community to give this project their very best. This may turn out to be the most powerful opportunity we have to battle the drug epi epidemic. From the bottom of my heart, I appeal to each of you to get involved on November 2nd and November 9th. Thank you. This program was made possible by grants from Metropolitan Life Foundation and Richard King Mellon Foundation. Additional funding was provided by the JM Foundation. Thank you.